Mr. Chopper, thank you so much for uh, speaking with us. Um, first of all, uh, you're now part of the Hollywood establishment, as it were. Um, shouldn't then we follow Hollywood's mantra and you know do a do a film preview screening for journalists? Uh, this conversation would have been so much more enjoyable had that been done. You know, it was done in in uh, New York, where I met the press, and in LA. And I'm not really happy it's not happened here because what happened is when I spoke to the people there, it was far more enlightening even for me, hmm. very educated. For instance, somebody said in New York, uh, a big critic, I won't name him, said, you know, I see a film every day, sometimes two a day. I haven't seen anything new in many years, you know, and I saw something new. Hmm. And I asked him, what is new in Broken Horses? So even for me, it was educative that he found something completely new in the movie. Mm. And, and he said that it doesn't follow the first, second, third act structure, that it has romance, it has action, it has... And I realized that I had brought unknowingly the Bollywood elements that I lived with in mm. a Hollywood film. But it was also educative for me. Yeah. And, um, not very happy that hasn't happened, but what we'll do is we'll fix it. You see it, and I'll talk to you again. Okay. <laughs> um, but but let's talk about the actual movie itself. Um, two brothers. There's a lot of confusion about the kind of uh, inspiration, the story behind it. Uh, it's not, and there has been talk about how it's uh, uh, a reworking, as it were, of uh, variously good fellas, Parin, uh, Parinda as well. I mean, tell us a little bit about the actual film. Two brothers. Why two brothers? And what's it about them that makes it so compelling? See, it's actually a takeoff on Parinda. It has nothing to do with Goodfellas. Right. Uh, we started, uh, me and Abhijat Joshi, seen Departed, Martin Scorsese, in New York. We were traveling uh, with Ekla with the Royal Guard. The last film I directed mm. had some raving reviews all over America. They called it The Lost Work of David Lean, etc. So we had screenings all over America. So we're traveling to Boston by train. And we'd both seen Departed, and the whole of America was raving about Departed. But you know, I, I prefer the original film, which was Infernal Affairs, and so did Abhijat. Mm. So we said, you know, why don't we take one of our original films like Parinda and try and make it better than original. So it actually started on that very childlike adventure mm. that we undertook after a couple of beers down in a moving train. Yeah. And that's how it started. And f the first draft we wrote uh, was uh, actually based in New York City. And then I went, and Nick Pelagi, who's written Goodfellas, Goodfellas, was my consultant. Yeah. And I was to meet Mr. Pelagi there in New York. And uh, I went to New York a day early, me and Abhijat, and, and we went to Rockefeller Center that night, and I conceived one killing there, which I was very excited about, which I'll use in some movie someday. Mm -hmm. And then I was walking down with Abhijat, and I realized, I said, this is Fifth Avenue. He said, yeah, I said, this is Sixth Avenue. He said, no, this is Park Avenue. I said, this is, so by the time I reached my hotel, I told Abhijat, we can't do this film. And so why? I said, because we'll make a fool of ourselves. The whole idea was to take on the great Martin Scorsese in our head. Mm -hmm. I don't know the city. This film is going to be very stupid. And we were very disappointed. Mm -hmm. We got drunk and we slept. It's mm -hmm. off. Next morning, I got an idea, early morning when I do most of my thinking of using elements like fire, water, earth, wind, elements that I'm familiar with. And I transported the whole story in the next one and a half days, actually rewrote the whole thing. And when Mr. Pelagi came, he had notes on the New York film. That was the first time I was meeting him. I said to him that I made a little change, Nick. And he said, what? And I narrated this whole film. And he said, when did you write it? So I tried to tell him that we went to Rockefeller Center, the same story I'm telling you. Yeah. So I said, between yesterday and now? I said, no, but we didn't sleep the whole night. And mm. Now, at that time, we had no idea whether it was good or bad or what we had done because we hadn't slept. And it was very kind of uh, Mr. Nick Pelagi to say it reminded him of Sergio Leone. Yeah. And that to me was, oh my God, we've yeah. done it. Yeah. I mean, oh, it, it's been described as a contemporary Western, and Sergio Leone was very kind of, you know, the whole spaghetti Western, very flamboyant. Um, and James Cameron, I think, described it as, you know, lean and sparse and very the opposite of the Bollywood movies that you're most known for. I know your directorial work are very lean and sparse as well. Uh, but um, 
Would a lean and sparse movie like this, would that work in Bollywood? Would that work in India? You see, let me tell you one thing very, very clearly, if it's not still clear to you, that Bollywood and Hollywood are two different planets. What works in Bollywood will not work in Hollywood. What There's works no in convergence even today. See, Bollywood is over the top performances, song and dance and all that, the mainstream Bollywood. And actually, Hollywood looks down upon Bollywood. And that is why for me this was a big challenge because I have done something which is coming from that culture. I have done something which is as good if not better if we were to believe James Cameron and Alfonso mm -hmm. and everybody else who's seen the film in the States. Um, I have just come here after seeing the film and, and meeting critics in New York and LA and all of them had seen the film. And I cannot even tell you that after the session in LA, I told my sister, she was there, I said, I need to see this movie, I haven't seen it for six months. What is it that they're all raving about? Because really speaking for me, that is the achievement because it's complete. When you'll see this film, hopefully on 10th April, mm -hmm. it's only when you will in the end see my name that you will realize that an Indian has written, produced and directed this film. I'm sure you'll forget. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm particularly excited about Vincent D'Onofrio. I mean, oh, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a, full, a fan of Full Metal Jacket and that iconic scene in the bathroom and all yeah, yeah. What was he like working with? Completely mad. Completely mad? Completely mad. Who's, who's... Vincent is crazy and so am I. So the funny thing was that his southern accent, I'll never forget, <laughs> there were times that he <laughs> delivered his line and I said, after I said cut, I said, Vince, now you tell me what exactly did you say word for word? And he used to look at me and change his accent to Indian. And he said, I said, I will kill you if you don't. So, so the fun between us was that he was, he's from the east side of New York. And I'm from, of course, the east. So I was his brother from the east. And he was my brother from the east. So right. both like, uh, yeah, he's just, he's just, yeah, and you know, for this movie, he's going everywhere in the U.S. just talking about this film, and, and mm. yeah, it was great. It was great. I'm, I can't see anybody else but Vincent doing it. Doing that, yeah. Um, finally, Mr. Chopra, um, I know it's it's uh, just passed through the CBFC. Um, how many how many cuts have have we had, and you know, how much of an impact? Do you think will that have on uh, on the on the final product? As it were, no, we have no cuts. You haven't. I've no, just. I've just been told that no. No, that's if we want to change the category from fifteen to twelve. Right. Okay. Then we have few cuts. Okay. Yeah. What do you What do you make of the recent uh, controversy surrounding Mr. Nehlani and and the CBFC? I make nothing of it. You I make am, nothing. I, of it. I just my world is my own world. It's broken horses. It's PK. If you see, I never either comment or I. I am not involved with anything else except my own world, which is a selfish way of living life. But that's how I live it. Yeah, I'm full of broken. Horses. But it does it does affect your work, though, doesn't it? It does. Let it affect my work. Everything affects my work. The the air crash of Lufthansa affects me. I'm going to travel Lufthansa tomorrow. Everything affects me. But do I choose to engage with the world, uh, and uh, or do I choose to engage with my creations? Uh, I have very little time on planet Earth. I choose to engage myself only with my creations and not with the world at large. Things that affect my creation, things that will help me make better cinema, I will engage with. Otherwise, there's very little time, really, my friend, to to do uh, to worry about <laughs> people of all kinds. You can't. At least I don't. This film is spare and lean, like a Steinbeck novel, and it's that darkly unforgettable. Broken Horses is an artistic triumph. I would say it almost defines a genre of its own. I'd call it Southwest Noir. The story follows two brothers who are worlds apart, but they're struggling together to escape this driving, implacable evil that looms over the whole film like a desert storm. It's beautifully written, acted, imaged, and the film just wraps around you like a snake and squeezes.